Okay, my name is Jack. Uh, I have a question before we get started. Are there any other math teachers in the audience? Come, come on up. Um, we have some seats right up here for math teachers. Uh, middle school math teachers, high school math teachers. We have a table right up here. Um, uh, side question, um, the title of my talk is Jim and Nim. How many people know how to play Nim? How many people have never seen Nim and that would like to learn it today? Okay, you could come on up. Would you like to come up? Here's a chance to learn a really fun game. Um, or you just sit in the back and sit on your hands. But this is your chance to come up and actually have fun um, while the rest of us just uh, stay silent. So run up here and here's uh, no waiting, no reservations needed. Come on up. Great, thanks. Um, so um, my name is Jaffa Wood. I'm from the New York Math Circle. My day job is at the Bard Masters of Arts Teaching Program where I work with pre-service teachers. But with the New York Math Circle, um, I focus on the teacher's math circles where I work with in-service math teachers. And this is an activity that um, I use with the teachers. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a classic game of men, and also a game that I invented called Jim, not named after Jim Tanton, but it's uh, Jim short for Jack that's Nim. It's my own version of Nim, which uh, if you're familiar with, with Nim, then challenge yourself to see how quickly you can see the connection between Jim and Nim. And, and why I made it this way. I have to step up here to, to get things started. Um, I just came off of uh, the, the third summer uh, teacher's math circle at our college with the New York Math Circle. And um, if you enjoy this, then I hope you'll join me next summer. Uh, so a, a brief outline, we're gonna talk about games, uh, a lot of different games, uh, in particular them. Uh, this is the focus. It's a, a game with a specific mathematical structure, which um, if you're a teacher, this is a really nice takeaway that you want to share this with your students because it's a great vehicle for explaining some high-level mathematical concepts. Um, we'll talk about strategies, what does that mean, especially in the context of them. And then I'll explain my name. By the way, did I mention that I invented a game? <laughs> uh, Jaff is Nim or Jim. It's a lot of fun. And then we'll see how far we get. But I'd like to go as far as to discover the winning strategy for them. We're going to look at two pile men and then hopefully get even get it to three pile men. And if we had more time, if we could keep you here for a couple more weeks, then we we go on to even more. This material leads in a lot of different directions. And one is that, that you can take two different games and add them together. There's actually an addition structure on, on games. And uh, two games can look completely different and yet be equivalent. And so this could be there. And if we had maybe a, another semester, we could talk about the spray Grundy theorem. Uh, I don't think that we'll get there today, but that's what's, um, there's a lot of mathematics behind this fun game that we're going to play. Okay. Um, but first, uh, before we talk about games, um, actually learn a magic trick. I want to share a magic trick with everyone. When I was a kid, I imagined that I grew up to be a magician, but somehow they spelled it wrong, and now I'm a mathematician. Uh, <coughs> I, can actually, I can actually guess your birthday. Okay. There's an easy way to do this and a hard way to do this, but uh, they both work. I can guess your birthday, the day of the month that you were born. I just need a volunteer. So who, who, who wants to be a volunteer? You do. OK, what's your name? Isaac. Isaac. So there's an easy way to do this and a hard way to do this. Let's see if the easy way works. So Isaac, I'm going to ask you one simple question, and then I'll tell the whole room your birthday, the day of the month that you were born. So the simple question is, what day of the month were you born? <laughs> <laughs> the date. The 14th. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaac was born on the 14th of the month. Let me, let's do this again. Um, we'll see if the easy way keeps working, but we may have to go to the difficult way. So I need another volunteer. In the back, what's your name, young man? Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan? Uh, let's see if the easy way works. Jonathan, what day of the month were you born? <laughs> <laughs> it worked, I want to see the hard way. Okay, well let's see. 
there's an, a, there's an intermediate step. Could you tell me the tens digit of the, of the day of the month you were born? Yes. Zero. And could you tell me the units digit of the day of the month you were born? <laughs> No? Oh, okay, so, so base 10, you're not going to work with base 10. Okay, we're going to go to the cards then. Are you ready to go to the cards? I am. Okay, so Jonathan, look at those five cards, and the day of the month that you were born appears in some of those cards and not in other cards. Okay, and I'm just going to ask you which cards your birth date appears in. Okay. Are you ready? I am. Did you look at all of them? Yeah. Okay. Up here. Well, you said that the, the tens digit was zero, so your birthday is not here. That is correct. Okay. Um, is your birthday, <laughs> should I stop here? <laughs> um, is, is your birthday in this box? Uh, no. No. How about the middle box? Yes. Yes. And the top right? Yes. And the top left? No. You were born on the sixth of the month. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> Can I get another volunteer? What's your name? Bud. Bud? Bud, I'm Jaffa. Bud, um, is the easy way going to work? No? Will you tell me your birthday then in base 10? No? Neither? Okay, we're going to go up to the cards then. So have you, have you located your birthday in, in the cards? Okay. How about in the, the top right, is your birthday up there? That's a yes? Yep. Um, in the middle? Yep. Uh, bottom right? Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, bottom left? No. Nope. Um, okay. And top left? No. Nope. Were you born on the 22nd of the yes. month? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Okay. Who's wondering how I have my, uh, how I get my magical powers? Who's wondering this? Okay, a few people anyways. Anyone here wondering? Have you seen this before? No? Then how come you're not wondering? <laughs> well, okay, I like that you're trying to figure it out. Did you notice any patterns in the boxes? There's a lot of interesting patterns, and I wonder if you can find some. I'd love it. The middle one? Oh, okay. So if you, there's eights down from 4 to 12, you add 8. 12 to 20, you add 8. 20 to 28, you add 8. But then it's once across. You just add 28 plus 1, 29 plus 1, 30 plus 1. That's, that's interesting. Is that true for the other boxes also? Do you see something? The top three are the same. The eight and the oh, that the top three go from one plus eight is nine, nine plus eight is seventeen, seven plus eight is twenty-five, and also here two plus eight is ten, plus eight plus eight. Um, does it work so over here? Because that's a plus four, and that's a plus twelve, and then back to plus four, and here it's plus four plus four plus four. Uh, this one has ones across, though. Does anybody else notice a pattern? Okay. Well, share a pattern with us. Top left-hand corner. Okay. So let's look at the top left-hand corner of these cards. Okay, see a one, two, four, eight, and sixteen. Those seem familiar. What's the pattern with those numbers? Is it times two? Yeah, they, they double. Two times one is two, times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen. Okay, so here's how I do my trick. Those are powers of two. Uh, what I actually do is, is if you say yes, then I'll add this magic number, the top left number. And if you say no, then I don't add it. 
So let's see if you can guess my favorite number. Okay, remember, if I say yes, you add the top left number. If I say no, you don't add the top left number. So uh, my favorite number is not in this card. Uh, it is in this card. It's in this card. Um, it's not here. And it is over there. Do you know my number? 13. 13. 13. That's right. You see, 13 is over there, so I'll take 8. Uh, 13 is here, and I'll take 4. And 13 is there, I'll add 1. So 8 plus 4 plus 1 gives 13. Um, so it's 8 plus 4 plus 1. And that's actually, it's a binary number. I'm going to use, I'm going to pad it with an extra zero on the left, just so that all my binary numbers uh, for this slide have, have five bits. Um, here's a zero, one, one, zero, one. This one means an eight. That one means a four. That one means a one. I'm sorry. Binary number? That's something that you might teach your students. Uh, uh, we normally use base 10. Um, I asked Jonathan why his birthday was in base 10. And he wouldn't tell to me, but he did tell me his birthday in base two, uh, which is the, where the magic comes from. Uh, so there's a place value. Um, here's the units digit, the, the, the units bit, the two bit, four bit, eight bit, and 16 bit. So 13 in base two is written like that. Um, and just like in increasing powers of 10, we have increasing powers of two to, to write down a, a number in binary, in base two. Okay. And if we take the magic cards and translate them into binary, here's what happens to the card that has an eight in the top left corner. This is the eight card. Um, eight translates to just eight. Nine is zero, one, zero, zero, one, and so on. And notice that every last number in this card has a one in the eighth bit. So if you say yes, that your card, that your number is in this card, what you're telling me is that there's a one in, in the eights place of your number. So, so we're going to have a quiz. Um, let's express six in binary. The easy way to do this, here's the warm up. The easy way is to take the highest power of two that, that's less than the given number, uh, four. And there's two left, uh, and now there's nothing left. So six is four plus two, and that's uh, one four, one two, and no ones, or one one zero. Uh, how about five? Well, we'll look for the highest power of two. That's a four. There's one left over, uh, which is a power of two. And we can express it this way. And if we just take the ones and the zeros, we got a one, zero, one, and two means it's in binary. So the magic trick works completely in binary. With a three, what's the highest power of two that's less than three? Someone tell me the highest, the highest power of two that's less than or equal to three. Two to the, two to the one. And there's one left over, that's a power of two. And so here's three written in binary, or zero, one, one. I'm just adding it with an extra <coughs> so that they all have the same number of bits. Uh, okay, so, so next quiz. I'm going to tell you two numbers, and you'll tell me which one is bigger. Uh, we'll warm up in base 10. Um, 1894 or 2011? <laughs> Which one is bigger? 2011. How did you know that? I looked at the thousand and two inch one. Right. You don't even have to count up to 2011 and see that that takes you longer than counting up to 1894. You just look at the, the thousands digit. The two. There's a two here, and there's only a one over there. You don't have to know anything more about these numbers, but to tell that 2011 is the bigger number. Okay, 
Here's a trick question then, Mr. Dawson's Digit. <laughs> Which one of those is bigger? How did you know that? I love the tens. The tens digit. Right, so even though the thousands digits are the same and the hundreds digits are the same, you look at the first the first place value where they're the different, they're different, and you pick the bigger number. So you do all the way to the tens digit to get to 1993 to see that that's bigger. Okay, now we're going to make it more difficult. Are you ready for base two? Okay. Which is bigger? Zero, zero, one, zero, one, or one, zero, one, zero, one? Okay. Looks more difficult in binary, doesn't it? Anyone? Should we take a vote? Who says that, who says that this is the bigger number? Who says this is the bigger number? Okay, the vote wins. You look at the place value, here's the ones digit, twos, fours, eights, and sixteens. And the first place they differ coming in from the left is in the sixteenth place. So that's all you have to know is that there's a zero and there's a one. So this is the bigger number. We don't have to change it back into, into decimal. We don't have to know how big it is. We just have to see what the place value is. How about this one? Which one of those numbers is bigger? Okay, let's take a vote again. Is it 10101 or is it 10011? So who votes for 10101? Who votes for 10011? That's right. So the 10101 wins. Uh, there's a, they agree in the first two bits, but they differ in this bit, and the one is bigger, so even though we don't need to know what this is in base 10, this is the bigger number. Okay. So let's go back to our talk. That was a lot of fun. That was how, that was how this magic trick works. Um, since you're so patient and you're up here, here's a copy of the magic trick for, for you to take home. Here's your friends, Alan and Jack that sent you. And, uh, I have some leftovers if you'd like a copy, they're, they're right up here after the talk. Okay, a uh, nice classic trick. Uh, we're going to talk about games, so I wanted to share a couple of my favorite games. These are some classics. Um, what game is this? What? And what, game, what game is this? Chess. Chess. It's chess. Classic game. Okay. Guess what I'm going to show next? Checker. No, it's backgammon. Backgammon. It's another classic game. And this one. Poker. So chess, backgammon, and poker. Three classic games. And I'd like to add two more games to this pantheon of, of classic games. One is Nim, which we're going to play with teddy bears. Uh, the participants have teddy bears in front of them. And uh, Nim, which we play with these tiddly rings. Does anybody in the audience want to play? I have some extra um, extra sets here. Okay, I saw I saw someone wiggling their finger right up here. <coughs> so you can uh, you can play right up here. Here's a complete set. Anyone else? Okay, in the back. So yeah, I have one more set for here. Okay, I need my teddy bears back at the end of this talk. Okay, so we're gonna um, we're gonna play Nim. Right now, I just want to learn how to play Nim. Notice that this is a game of three pile. So take your teddy bears, make a pile of six teddy bears, five teddy bears, and three teddy bears. And right now, we're just going to learn how to play. Uh, we're going to figure out strategy later. You put the, uh, the round chips to the side. You just hold three piles, six, five, and three. And you might have an extra penny stuff. Oh, you should get a penny turn. Oh, no, you're good. So here's the rules. When it's your turn, you can pick one pile of penny bears, and you can take one or more penny bears from that pile. 
And the, the, the goal of the game is to take the last 10 bits. Okay, so decide who goes first. And let's just play a couple of quick games and see how, see how it works. Are you ready? Okay, I'll play you. Everyone else can watch. Yeah, play. you said one or two. Uh, you can take from take <laughs> one pile and take one or more teddy bears from that pile. You take all of the teddy bears from the pile. But your goal is to take the last teddy bear. So I'll go first. Uh, I'll just take three. Okay. Okay.
yellow and there's red. Question over here. Oh, great, yes. I was hoping I'd hear that. Does anybody else want to play? Uh, this is also a two-person game. I'm really excited because this is this is Jim. Did I mention that I invented this game? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be the, the leftmost yellow chip, but the first chip that you put from the left has to be yellow to red. And then after that, you can do anything you want. You can put from yellow to red or red to yellow. Yeah, that would be good. But that's Jim. Can you switch back? Um, you can switch back. So actually, uh, no, I can't play. I don't have the interactive Jim game. But here's a yellow, yellow, red. I could, I could switch this yellow to red and leave this alone and switch this red back to yellow. And then on the next turn, we would have uh, red, yellow, yellow. I could, the first, the first move that I make has to be yellow, but it could be this yellow, and I get to put that back to red. Who understands the rules of Jim? The object is to make the last move. You, make, you pick one row, and you make one move. It's all red, but it's not. If they're all red, then you can't make a move. So you're saying this is a losing position? Why is this a losing position? Well, so, so let's say that you pick the top row, you pick a yellow chip and flip that, and then you can't do anything to the right, and your opponent ends up with a red row and then this row, they have also one move they can make, and they give you both red and red. I'm still thinking of 
just a couple minutes left, um, and we're having a lot of fun. I think that we've, we've just about analyzed two row gym positions. Uh, this is a losing position. It turns out that the copycat strategy um, will, will work, that no matter what you can do, your opponent can do the same move in the other row. And so if you have, if you still have a move left, then your opponent has a move left. And so, so if the two rows are identical, it's a losing position. And I was going to ask you, what happens if, if the two rows are not identical? Uh, is this a losing position or a winning position? <laughs> what was the answer? I just said it's a winning position because then you can make the uh, are identical. Right. On your move, you could, you could even out the rows. And then the copycat strategy will, will get in. Does that seem like it's my first guess, but now I'm Well, I can even these out. I can, I can look at the second row and flip this to red. Don't you have a slot for the first one? No. Um, I can take a yellow token. Uh, and we have to start with the okay. So. I um, we just have a couple minutes left. I have a real question about the rules, though. Are both players sitting on the same side of the table, or is it left yes. for one and right for the other? Yes, the, both players have the same left side. So they have to be sitting on the same side of the table. Mm -hmm. Or they have to be able to agree what's the left side of it. Well, that's all I wanted to know, because otherwise it's a very different game. Yeah, otherwise I'm fine. Yeah. So, so what that Thank <laughs> you. 